So welcome to CIS 257. We we'll just continue with our uh, agenda here, and uh, as promised, after spring break, we're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about uh, uh, graphical user interface uh, and uh, the differences between the uh, standard console window that we've uh, already used for a while, and now switching to the graphical user interface, which 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 uh, we'll be using. Um, multiple windows uh, to display information and of course uh, the, the question is what's what runs inside inside these windows and what is um, uh, what is new for us uh, uh, on the programming uh, standpoint uh, so what, what what are new things that we have to be aware of what are new things that we need to incorporate into our design and in general, what it takes to program a graph, uh, an application with uh, uh, with uh, a graphical user interface. So let's um, let's run a uh, a quick comparison between the two uh, applications. Uh, just um, just a quick uh, overview of what we already know about the console window. Okay, so I'll just go to uh, do a simple demo here. <clears throat> so, for instance, um, if I have a console uh, application, uh, you know that this this console application is basically taking um, an approach that uh, it executes a number of steps. Eventually, it may exit, and uh, occasionally, it asks user for input. Right. So there are times when we stop the application and basically ask the user to provide some input. So the user typically types something here, and they hit the enter key, right? The enter key, and that information is input into the program, and the program continues. So the program continues, and then the next time we want to ask user for some input, the execution completely blocks, and we are typically waiting for that uh, input, and uh, we're completely at the mercy of the user uh, to uh, wait as long as they have to wait, and then eventually hit the enter key again. Right. So once the enter key again is is hit, typically your command window or console window uh, decides that at this point this input should become available to the application which is currently uh, running and waiting for that input. And so we get the chance to accept that input, uh, perhaps validate that input, and continue on. But overall, it's a very procedural approach in terms of uh, all inputs and when those inputs happen are totally predictable. Now imagine the, a different situation when we have a window. Uh, uh, window uh, or Windows app, the app that has uh, a graphical user interface window, which may appear like this, right? So we have a uh, something displayed on the screen. We have the title bar. We have an optional X box here to close the application. We have some kind of a title over here. Then we have some input boxes. Uh, we can have a scroll bar. Uh, something like that, right? <laughs> uh, we can have uh, uh, check boxes with check marks and some labels, and of course we can have buttons such as OK or cancel and so forth. So there's uh, so first observation that, uh, of of the difference between the two that we have, as opposed to a single way of getting uh, user input. Uh, regardless whether we were waiting for integers or strings or double values or anything else, here we essentially designate certain gadgets that can provide uh, certain graphical uh, user interface input to the program. Now, all of a sudden, besides the keyboard, uh, we need to be aware of p potentially we would like to worry about uh, input from a mouse, right? There, there could be mouse present on the screen so that we may want to track its position and we want to uh, recognize when the user clicks or double clicks or right clicks and, uh, uh, and uh, similar, right? We can also, uh, uh, we, we, we would like to also uh, recognize uh, times when they type something in into the text box or click a button and do other actions on this um, on this uh, screen or window. In addition, uh, the, the, the user could have multiple windows 
and uh, multiple windows could be part of our application. So instead of just having one window, we can have uh, a multiple, uh, multiple windows. So the approach here is that uh, the window application has some kind of a startup code which essentially displays perhaps a window on the screen and then goes uh, into a waiting mode it, instead of uh, just um, uh, you know expecting to get a certain input from a certain text box instead the application is now uh, should uh, now should be ready to accept an event or input from any of this right it could be a mouse driven or it could be a keyword uh, keyboard driven uh, it could be a, a, a menu shortcut um, uh, key and then execution of a menu item there could be um, essentially it's completely unpredictable what is going to happen next it's completely up to the user what action they're going to take next they could exit entirely uh, right away or they can spend some time and uh, uh, and then uh, decide to click an OK button so therefore, our application after this initial startup code, which basically displays this window, has to go into some kind of a waiting mode. I don't know how to display it. Maybe like a like a like a like a loop, which basically, you know, just stays here and says, "Whatever happens, I will be ready." And guess what? If the user clicks the button, we have to execute one thing. If the user uh, starts typing into the text box and hit the, the tab key or enter key, we want to execute a different code. If they want to use the scroll bar, for whatever reason we had that scroll bar over, over here, there could be another uh, portion of the program that should execute. So therefore, it's completely unpredictable in what order and if ever any of this will be invoked. Essentially, the style of programming is that let's provide enough gadgets and enough this graphical user interface controls so that the user has choices, but at the same time, we need to be completely ready for multiple events associated with these gadgets and, and windows and scroll bars and menu items that may be available to the user. And so we, we should be responding um, uh, you know, accordingly uh, to any of these events. In other words, uh, console app um, is uh, something that is, uh, uh, that is friendly to a procedural, uh, procedural design, right? It's uh, typically not a, an, not a big challenge to write procedural code which just executes procedures without any kind of object-oriented object uh, approach to, to implement and write a console application. Whereas in a window, app, in a window application in environment or graphical user application environment, uh, what we need to do is that we need to uh, plan for an event-driven uh, event uh, environment, okay? So this is going to be an um, uh, event-driven environment, and it's very likely that we would like to choose uh, certain classes, certain specific uh, objects to uh, respond to messages from these gadgets that are visible on screen. So the philosophy changes, and by the way, one of these calls or events could cause an application to exit entirely, right? So we may say, okay, if if they click an OK button or this X button, we can take certain uh, certain measures, certain steps to say, let's uh, exit this application, and uh, this should be uh, the end of the program execution uh, because the user decided to to exit out. So. So this is a completely event-driven, and we don't know what's going to happen. And uh, in this sense, the event-driven approach um, perhaps is a, a, m m a much better platform to handle event-driven environment. Is actually object-oriented approach, and this is something that we're, we should be we should be ready for by now, and we should be uh, uh, we should begin to discuss. Mm, uh, you know, useful objects which uh, implement a graphical user interface.